with you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Good afternoon and good evening to my European and Asian brothers. I hope you're doing well. As always, a great way you can support this channel is by hitting that like button, leaving a comment. Let me know what you had for breakfast or if you're in, you're in Europe, some, some, uh, some lunch, dinner, whatever you want to throw out in there. Be my guest. It's always great to see your comments in the comment section. Hey, for first things first, for once, uh, back to GameStop. GameStop CFO resigns following Reddit stock training mania. Retailers SEC filing said the move was not because of any disagreement with the company, as they would say. So to be honest with you, there isn't much news about there. There's lots of speculation, but following weeks of headline grabbing attention for social media fueled stock trading frenzy, GameStop announced Tuesday that its chief financial financial officer, Jim Bell, re will resign from his role effective March 26th. A, a reason for Bell's resignation was not immediately clear. And then the person who wrote this article was like, well, I need to have more words in here. So how about I describe blah, 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 random stuff that isn't entirely related to this particular point. So down at the bottom um, of this article, if I can find it, let's see. The company has launched a search for Bell's permanent replacement, noting that they are seeking a CFO with, quote, the capabilities and qualifications to help accelerate GameStop's transformation. I like those words. I like them. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that laugh was so so retarded. Oh, excuse me. Uh, hey, you know what? You, most of you are on Wall Street bets. I don't need to be PC. All right, anyway. The search will evaluate both internal and external candidates is being conducted by a, quote, leading executive search firm. If a permanent replacement is not in place at the time of Bell's departure, GameStop intends to appoint a chief accounting officer and senior vice president uh, Di Diana Jaje to the role of C interim CFO. Uh, Etc. Blah blah blah. So, what? Lots of speculation. Lots of wondering what this means for the future of GameStop. I, um, I do think that there's a move here that they can make, that they will make, that uh, will signal everything that I, am, who have shares in the stock, who have held onto my shares through the valleys and the peaks and the valleys again. Um, am thinking where this company is going and I think that they're going to add somebody and, and that it's a it's a home run and so man my nose is killing me right now and so I feel like I'm in college again and you know, what, what do I mean by that well I was in a fraternity in college we had the you know we had rush where we would um, recruit new members of the fraternity etc. It was by no means the stereotype stereotypical fraternity that you're thinking of, but you know we had fun. It's blah blah blah. You know whatever. Anyway, so we had this term called rush crush. Who's your rush crush? Who's this guy who you are looking at who you would want to join the fraternity more than anyone else? And, and I'm I'm looking at this not that I have any. Well I do. I, I have shares, so I have some ownership in. GameStop, I guess I could contact them and say, hey, I want you to hire this guy. And they won't listen to me, but, you know, I'm thinking about who my rush crush is. And I, I highly doubt this, but this this would be my rush crush. Internal memo, key Amazon exec Jeff Blackburn officially leaving, hinting at a new role elsewhere. This would be my rush crush, Jeff Blackburn. <laughs> uh, it's it's It would be hilarious, but it would also be enforcing of... The, the 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 mentality that GameStop's going to dominate in the coming years if Jeff Blackburn were to leave Amazon for a new role in GameStop. I, he's been with Amazon for 20 years. He is key in transforming Amazon from a book company into a global empire. Um, you don't hear as much about Jeff Blackburn as you would obviously about Jeff Bezos or Jeff Bezos' wife who rode that train for a while and then got out at the peak um so anyway just things like that i'll be scouring the internet looking for future rush crushes um but hey he's leaving hey why, why not come over to gamestop jeff blackburn something like that i talk about a catalyst that would send the stock much higher uh it, you know gamestop hire, hiring a new cfo a, one that um signifies that they are absolutely about to transform 
uh, their business and potentially the industry down the road. That is something that will st send the stock higher. That's what happened when they hired uh, Mr. Cohen or they brought him on the board is that it's like, okay, see what you did with Chewy? That same thing is going to happen with GameStop. So I'll be keeping my ear to the ground. Anyway, uh, lots to talk about today. Bitcoin has recovered quite nicely from its 50 or 45,000 crashed down to a little under $45,000 yesterday from a peak of $50,000. My portfolio has recovered a little bit, you know, still some way to go. I'm not worried about it at all. Um, I do think that we are in, um, we're, we're not out of the water yet. I, I want to warn you. All right. Thinking back to January, got up to $42,000 and then went down pretty heavily and then the price of Bitcoin got close to $40,000 and it looked like it was going to break through and it looked like everything was over. And then it went back down pretty heavily. I, I want to say back down at under $30,000 after it hit $40,000. And so there may be something coming with Bitcoin. You know, that that seemed... Now, th this, is, this is how it works. Either, either this is a quick crash and a quick bounce, which is my guess... Or this is a quick crash, a bounce, and then another point, which will take you to the the point of um, sort of a point of despair. I don't want to say despair, but a point where you will be strongly questioning whether you should hold or sell. And I'm telling you now, if it gets to that, and if it goes down to 42,000 or maybe even a little bit lower, like I was talking about yesterday, that that will be the bottom. And if you sell... You will feed the whales, and Michael Saylor will thank you, thank you very much for um, for your contribution of cheap shares. And so I, I'm just going to warn you guys right now. My nose is running like crazy, so I'm going to try to keep going through this video. If you if I sound weird, if anything feels weird, it's because my nose is stuffed like crazy right now. But anyway, moving on. Three reasons Bitcoin price is quickly recovering from its, quote, severe 23% correction. Bitcoin recovered quickly from 44800 to over $50,000 in under 22 hours. And here are three key reasons why. Yeah, it did get up to, I think, $51,000. Um, and now it's at 49 something Not worried too much. So the price of Bitcoin quickly recovered from around 44800 to over 50000 within 22 hours. Behind the rapid recovery are three major facts, including low funding rates, Square's $170 million Bitcoin purchase, and the spot market stabilizing. So the, these two, I mean, it's easy to say the second reason in this article is Square. They announced that they purchased another $170 million of Bitcoin. They did this right before earnings was reported. They did the same thing in October, where they announced that they purchased $50 million of Bitcoin. Uh, these are that, that is such a small number in comparison to numbers that we have seen. But at the same time, all right, if Bitcoin has if Bitcoin right now has less than a one trillion dollar market cap, one point seven million dollars of that is not necessarily a drop in the bucket. So let me think about that. A billion. Yeah, I mean, it, it, actually, it is. Never mind. Never <laughs> moving on. Um, I mean, it, it's a small amount, but it, it is what matters about this is that um, Square by no means is at this point where they're like, hey, this is at the top. And so we're going to sell. Actually, no, we're buying more because we know where this is going. So uh, Twitter Square CEO Jack Dorsey, uh, that's quite an endorsement by him. And so the other two points here are significant. They're worth talking about. Bitcoin futures funding rates substantially drop across major futures exchanges, including Binance, Bybit, and Bitfinex. The funding rate of Bitcoin has dropped to 0.01%. Bitcoin futures funding rate was consistently above 0.1% throughout the entirety of the rally from the 40,000s to 58,000. So here, what do I mean by, or what does, how do we explain funding rate? Okay, here we go. When the futures funding rate is high, it means the market is overcrowded with buyers and the rally is likely overextended. And so this is retail again. When retail, when your friends are texting you, when they're calling you, which happens very often with me, especially during hot times, 
um, that is a sign that it is overextended. And so the market in this case was overcrowded with, with buyers from uh, pretty much when it was announced that Tesla was buying in until $58,000. So this creates a major risk for a long squeeze, which can cause the price of Bitcoin to drop quickly in a short period. Exactly what happened with the funding rate back to 0.01%. The risk of a long squeeze is significantly lower. And if a new uptrend ensues, this rally could be more sustainable. So this is another reason why I'm saying that the price of Bitcoin could bounce back and, and this could be it. I'm just, you know, that seems a little too easy for, for my likings. I'm, I'm more of a pessimist in that regard. But the signs are pointing to a recovery uh, from that drop to about $45,000. So we'll see. We talked about Square. Square buys $170 million worth of Bitcoin. Um, and then here we go. Spot market is stabilizing. When the price of Bitcoin was correcting, the price of Bitcoin on spot exchanges like Coinbase was much lower than futures exchanges. February 23rd, for instance, Bitcoin was trading $600 lower on Coinbase at one point when the price was near 44800 When the price of Bitcoin initially recovered, there were signs of a bearish retest. John Cho, the director of global expansion, blah, blah, blah. We were expecting it, but didn't think it, it would come this soon or this fast. A solid bounce from here would be ideal, but some potential retracement support regions I'm watching. My bias is towards the 40, 41K region, as it would fulfill a 30% correction from the all-time high. And um, so either way, like I'm saying, it could go either way. Uh, do not fret if this gets to 40,000, 41,000, 42,000. Um, it will bounce quickly and yeah and uh, the, the, so the, the thing i'll disagree with john cho was that his name i, I don't want to mess that up yeah john cho is that people who have been here since 2017 2013 etc they have it fixed in their minds that we have to have 30 percent corrections from peaks and what I'm saying is my hypothesis is that that doesn't necessarily have to happen throughout this bull run, that I think it's going to be more like 25% corrections because um, because of the heavy institutional investment this time around that didn't exist last time. And so the, the, the peaks and valleys don't need to be as severe throughout the top. And with that being said, I do think that we're going to have a blow off double top like in 2013, where there's going to be a crash that looks like the crash. And by crash, I don't mean like a 70% crash. I'd say max 50%, maybe from 100 to 50,000 or 100 to 60,000. That'll look like the crash. People will be faked out and then the price will shoot up like crazy. So until then and after then, 25 or so percent corrections, we don't need to have 30% corrections. But anyway, so things are looking fine with Bitcoin. I would say they're looking quite good. Another reason why I would say things are looking good. So MicroStrategy, we already talked about that they were putting another billion dollars into Bitcoin. Um, so they announced that they made their purchases. And it was interesting to me, their average purchase price was $52,765 per coin. Um, I thought it would have been lower, but their purchasing is done. They are in. They're in at a higher price than where Bitcoin is now. Um, I am curious to see what their dollar cost average is now. It was around $15,000, so I would guess that it's in the 30s now. Um, definitely a sign on, on Michael Saylor's part of a belief in Bitcoin, and I am sure that it'll have a positive effect on the stock price moving forward. So nothing but positive news, honestly. I mean, the price is its own thing. But as far as the news is concerned, there is nothing but positive news, including Including this tether, tether to report reserves and pay 18.5 million fine after settlement with the New York Attorney General. For those of you who are new to Bitcoin, uh, you've gotten in recently, especially if you've just watched, wa been watching this channel, and you've gotten in because of just things we've talked about on the channel. Um, this was this was a big deal 
back in January, people were spreading a lot of fear about Tether. And I made a video about that a little bit before January, a TikTok at least. And I'm going to play that TikTok just so you see. I keep hearing talking. about an upcoming Tether related Bitcoin crash that's coming on January 15th. But do you know what's going to happen to the price of Bitcoin on January 15th? Nothing. I mean, lots could happen on the 15th but none of it will be related to Tether. In case you're wondering, January 15th is the date set by the New York Attorney General in which Bitfinex and Tether have to submit documentation of their financial relationship. But it's not like the AG is gonna be able to process all that information, call a press conference, and make an announcement that's gonna send the Bitcoin price crashing anytime soon. This is a process that's gonna take weeks and even months. I explain this in much more detail on my YouTube channel, so check it out. Okay, so here's what happened in, in January. Um, it, this was actually on Reddit, on I think Bitcoin, the Bitcoin subreddit, and this took this gained a lot of steam. I saw a lot of comments and people saying January fifteenth, January fifteenth is going to be some kind of doomsday scenario with Tether. And so, what's Tether? Tether is a stable coin. Um, they have a U.S. dollar, and there was there were some fears that they were taking on like a Fed two point role where they were just printing their own coins and not having that backed by actual dollars which would have been like that that would have driven me up the wall how, how awful that would have been and so there were allegations that they were doing things like that that they weren't actually backed one-to-one -one by their dollars and um no i don't want another fed federal reserve 2.0 i don't want federal reserve 1.0 you know, and so that kind of that went to the New York's attorney general and people were afraid that on January 15th that it was going to there was going to be some massive reveal that the price of Bitcoin was pumped up because Tether was printing off these non backed dollars, these non backed Tether coins and using that to buy Bitcoin and then selling their Bitcoin and having this cycle go over and over again. And like I said in my video there, my TikTok, nothing happened on January 15th. And it turns out this is the end of that drama. Nothing happened on January 15th. Nothing happened today. It's over. Tether is, is paying an $18.5 million fine and it's over. So I don't want to hear anything else from Tether about Tether because that was nonsense. It caused a lot of fear, uncertainty, and doubt. People sold their Bitcoins and they got scammed. I mean, the price of Bitcoin back then was, you know, around $30,000. And look at it now. It's like all th this kind of stuff happens all the time and it drives me crazy. I mean, all this stuff about Janet Yellen, former Fed chair, talking about all this nonsense about Bitcoin. It's clear that she doesn't understand a thing about Bitcoin, but it seems like every time she opens her mouth, I have to hear this nonsense about how that's causing the price of Bitcoin to go down. Janet Yellen is irrelevant to Bitcoin. Anyway, all right, I, that is actually, <laughs> that's actually it for Bitcoin today. So... Moving on, Kathy Wood. Kathy, man, ARK. This is a loss. I, I might have to report a loss here. I'm going to hold on to it because I, I bought one option on the ARK ETF and um, it's expiring in, in June. So I have some hope, but I pretty much bought at the top. I bought an option uh, with a strike price of about $158 on ARK. And um, ARK has been suffering since then. And here's why. So ZeroHedge.com, they're, they're just nonstop pessimists. And so I take everything that I read on Zero Hedge with a grain of salt. However, um, they're, they're not bullish on, on Kathy Wood. I mean, look, look at this first sentence here. We would be remiss to mention the turmoil that the NASDAQ has, has been under for the last couple of sessions without mentioning everyone's favorite visionary tech investor, Kathy Wood, at ARK Invest. And they go on to say that our, that Kathy Wood's a little overrated. I mean, she might be. I don't know. I, I still like her. But um, they attribute a lot of her, a, a lot of the ARK ETFs in, insane growth. I think it's, it's tripled over the last year uh, to just basically riding the Tesla train. And that's not entirely true. But people are uh, putting out these bearish scenarios with ARC. I'm afraid the ARC party is over. Flows reserved to the tune of 1.3 billion in a day. Women and children to lifeboats first. Blah blah blah. Anyway, so uh, lots of outflows with ARC ETF. So here's what they own. 
They own Tesla. They own Workhorse. If you don't know who Workhorse is, Workhorse is a three, uh, sorry, uh, an electric vehicle truck company. And so ARC owns 2.6 million shares of Workhorse. Why is that significant? Because there was a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, fake news coming out that Workhorse was going to be signing a multi-billion dollar contract with the U.S. Postal Service. That, had, that was always unlikely. That was really, there was no chance that that was going to happen. But that did drive the price of Workhorse's stock up. That news, the, the rumors of that potentially happening. And so it was announced that Workhorse did not get that deal and their price dropped by over 30%. I am bullish on Workhorse. I don't know of any other company. I mean, they're, they're way ahead of the, the game. And so their price will recover. And I think that that's, this is a great buying opportunity for Workhorse. But, you know, it was overinflated because of this potential USPS news that ended up not being a thing. So we have that. Um, <clears throat> We have Tesla, that they're big in Tesla. You know my opinion on Tesla in the short term, that it is generally a stay away. Um, you know, oh, and they're in 3D Systems Corp, which announced some, some potential issues with their products. And so that sent the price of 3D down. Um, what has ARC done in response to all of this is they've bought more Tesla. And so here's what I'm thinking, you know, Tesla, my biggest risk when I'm saying that I'm a short term bear on Tesla is that they could easily make me look stupid within a week. You know, you, you hear me talking about how I, I could see Tesla going down to $450 a share. And a week from now, I could look like an absolute idiot so who knows tesla has been so unpredictable but as far as kathy wood and arc are concerned they bought more tesla yesterday they, they bought it at a great price let me see where tesla is right now i mean they bought it under 600 tesla pre-market at least is at 700 so i'm holding on to my arc etf maybe i am wrong i mean by the by the time june rolls around uh tesla could be much higher than it is now so anyway maybe uh, take this into consideration if you are big on ARC, if you're big on Kathy Wood, that you know maybe a lot of her genius has been overhyped, be mostly because she's just bought in on uh, Tesla and rode that wave. But moving on, I'm going to actually save this next one for the end. We're going to talk about a metal that perhaps, perhaps... I have been too negative on. So we'll talk about that. But first, let's take a look at some stocks here. CCIV, uh, you know, price discovery mode right now. Not, not much has changed. Um, GameStop is whatever, you know, nothing major to report on GameStop. We looked at Tesla, that they're back above $700 pre-market. Apple is eh, whatever. You know, we'll see what happens with Apple. I, this this could be a good bottom for Apple. I'm, I still have my, my options. They expire in July and in November. I'm not worried about them. They went into the red yesterday after being up four figures earlier in the month. I'm not worried about it. I, I But this may be a good time. Who knows? But anyway, silver. Silver. I've been reading Zero Hedge since 2010, I believe. And... They, they've all, they've talked about precious metals. They talked about silver. They talked about how it's been manipulated over the years. And I, I love this because it's like my life has come full circle. Zero Hedge is posting about Wall Street bets. They're sharing posts from Wall Street bets on to on their website and it's just wow this is this is amazing i mean this website i've been reading for over a decade now they're they're copying and pasting wall street bet stuff so here's what i want to talk about with silver i mean people were talking about citadel shilling silver and all this stuff and and so i i just i was a lot very reactionary with silver and I think that I was a little bit unfair 
to just all the posts that had to do with silver. I mean, it, it was highlighted in this article or this copy pasta that the person who posted this silver research, which I think is phenomenal, um, has made plenty of posts about GameStop and how they bought GameStop over $100 a share and still believe in the future of stuff like that. So this person is not a shill for Citadel, the happy Hawaiian. And if you're looking, if you're convinced by any of this, it's really long, so I'm not going to read all of it. Uh, buy yourself this ETF, PSLV, because the ETF SLV is actually, if you were to buy that, uh, negative for the price of silver. But this one, they actually, when you buy the ETF, they have to actually uh, buy silver. And so this actually, this this was pretty convincing that a massive short squeeze is coming with silver and so PSLV get it on that but here's the thing I want to share with you look at that and I am telling you I I got into silver in 2011 around the the local peak there which was near $50 an ounce and and then I and then it went down and I, I was like man the research I've done is good what is going on with this price right now and what I came to find out is that the price of silver was so heavily manipulated by these shorts and they were getting away with it. And I can tell you, I can affirm to you that this is absolutely true. 573% of the float is currently sold short. And so will there be a massive short squeeze coming with silver? I, I'm i getting in. I mean, I, I got in. Um, I'm, I'm going to get in more long term. And so there are a couple things that I'm thinking of PSLV, but then ZSL, if it will pull up here, come on ZSL, there we go, ProShares Ultra Short Silver. So ultra leveraged ETFs, which this is, they just don't perform well in the long term. The price of silver goes up. This is supposed to go down. But what happens when the price of silver goes down is ultimately this thing will still go down. And so look at look at the last whatever many years here, five years. Yeah, this is five years. So this is not correlating at all with the price of silver. It just goes down. Um, so this is my bet. I'm going to buy some puts on ZSL and some, you know, extended puts. But check out this post, this article. Go to Zero Hedge. It's on the front page of Zero Hedge right now. I found the data... Uh, Comex, they're they're not going to be able to buy as much silver as is needed to cover this stuff when the price of silver goes up, if and when the price of silver goes up, and that is going to cause a squeeze. And so, lots and lots and lots of data here. I will no longer be banning the mention of this metal here. Okay, we will be talking about silver. I will be following this if there is a silver short squeeze. Um, I'm going to pay attention and I'm going to talk about it. So with that being said, do your own research. This video is for entertainment purposes only. Do your own research before investing your hard-earned money. Until then, I will see you tomorrow. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Like, subscribe, comment. And until then, peace out.